Hi, I'm Lina Inkorsdottir and I'm the senior producer of Star Wars Battlefront uh, at DICE and we're here at Gamescom. So talk about what's new when it comes to Star Wars here at Gamescom. Uh, yesterday at the press conference we showed off a new mode, uh, our dogfighting mode Fighter Squadron, taking place in the skies above the planet of Sullust, which is our uh, visualization of a planet that's been known in the Star Wars lore, but it's DICE now that's defining the look of the and feel of this planet going forward. So we're super excited about both Fighter Squadron and Sullust and showing it off here. Talk a little about the, the dogfighting experience and what people can expect to play. They can really expect to fulfill their Star Wars fantasies as it relates to dogfighting. Uh, we're putting you in the cockpit of an X-Wing or an A-Wing or a TIE Fighter or a TIE Interceptor. And you even have the opportunity to play uh, piloting the Millennium Falcon or Slave One. Uh, so, you know, to us that's super exciting and from the reception of people playing here today, it's, uh, it seems like people are enjoying it. And the objective for us is to be, be able to give you that experience of dogfighting in the sky. So we have, uh, it's a 10 versus 10 mode. And then we also have 20 AI starfighters as well to sort of amp up the, the epicness of the mode and, and give you some, some real chaos in the sky. George Lucas was originally inspired by World War II dogfighting. Did you guys go back and look at that at all in addition to Star Wars when developing this gameplay? We actually did. We, we are fortunate enough to have access to some great people from, from Lucasfilm and, and ILM. And we had a, 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 pres a presentation from one of them, John Knoll, on actually you know, showing us these movies and talking about uh, George Lucas's inspiration, which then prompted us to look at some of these movies and, and be inspired by those. You guys also had access to the actual props. Can you talk a little about how that helped when recreating these virtual versions of all these uh, spaceships? It, it actually, you know, going to the Lucasfilm archives, where, which is where they keep the original props and the, uh, the models from the original trilogy of movies, was, I think it helped in two ways. One is that it gives us these, you know, the real, the real props and the, and, and the real, you know, assets to actually to study and then to recreate in our game using a technology called photogrammetry, which is basically where you take, uh, let's say, Darth Vader's helmet and you take... Uh, dozens of pictures of it from you know slightly different angles and then you stitch them together using software to actually recreate it uh, as a 3D model. But it also gives us this amazing sense of being a part of this franchise and, and getting sort of into this inner circle and, and you know at the same at the same time it, it you know it's fascinating for us to get so close to the, the source material but also instills you with that you know enormous sense of responsibility. You guys at the studio have access to all the different gameplay modes in this game. Where does dogfighting rank when you guys are able to go and do anything? Well, I guess that depends a lot person to person. Uh, I think, you know, for some of us, dogfighting has been such a big fantasy that, you know, that's basically all you want to do is to, to pilot that X-Wing and, and, you know, take down TIE Fighters. Uh, for others, it's the, the epic, all of, you know, mode of Walker Assault, which we've shown there. We have another mode that's a favorite among the team, which is called Drop Zone, which we haven't shown yet, but uh, is, is a pretty intense objective-based uh, infantry mode. So there's, I mean, we've, we've uh, managed to capture and create so many different types of fantasies. So it's very, you know, very much based on the individual what they like. But we think that anyone who likes Star Wars and Star Wars gameplay and has those battle fantasies will be able to find something within our game. When it comes to building these uh, different planets you guys are working with, you went to the original locations for the ones from the original trilogy. For, for this planet that you're referring to for the dogfighting, where did you guys find inspiration for it? Well, for me, it was very close to home. But Sullust is actually based uh, on my home country of Iceland. So that's not so far away from Sweden. So that, you know, you have amazing lava, you have sulfur pits, you have uh, blue, the, the Blue Lagoon is, is, uh, is a famous location in Iceland that, you know, we've been heavily inspired by. And you can see it, uh, you know, very much inspired the game. So, you know, that, that's where we went. It's a dream come true for Star Wars fans this year. In addition to your game, we have Episode 7. What do you feel the impact will be once that movie's out in generating interest for your game? 
I think, you know, we've seen, you know, Star Wars, the original trilogy, captured the whole generation of, of, of people like myself and, and, you know, my generation. And then the next uh, next trilogy of movies captured another generation of Star Wars fans. And I think that now, with this new trilogy of movies, we're going to see it again. We're going to see, you know, basically a new generation of fans being introduced by Star Wars, but most probably also those two previous generations get caught up in that again. So I think we'll see Star Wars frenzy like never before. Can you talk a little about the connection through the expansion pack between uh, Episode 7 and this game? So in, in the, the opening sequence of the, uh, the trailer for uh, Episode 7, the last one we saw, you can see a desert planet and you can see a crashed st Star Destroyer on this desert planet. And the planet is the planet of Jakku. And the Star Destroyer is there because there was this, this battle over this planet and on the ground of, of this planet of Jakku that happens in the same timeline. It happens basically uh, not so long after the Battle of Endor. And so what we're doing is, is that we are uh, giving out this free expansion pack, uh, the Battle of Jakku, which comes out for December, on December 8th and is free for everyone. But if you pre-order, you get it on December 1st. And that's basically where we're bringing you into this Battle of Jakku. So you get to be there as the Star Destroyers come crashing down. How big a Star Wars fan were you growing up? I, I don't think that I've ever actually you know, you know. I think that Star Wars has always been a part of my life and a part of my sort of cultural environment. I remember, you know, my first memory of Star Wars is the memory of Darth Vader and being terrified of him. And uh, you know, I've, I've always e appreciated Star Wars, and you know, I, I, I love the original trilogy of movies. I love talking about it. I, I played with the Kenner figures as a kid, and to get to be a part of it. You know, to part of contributing to that universe right now and get to work so closely with the people from Lucasfilm is, you know, it, it's indescribable, if that's even a word. <laughs>